from Scott's Animal Adventures and today we will be looking at the care and typical day-to-day -day life of an ice pod keeper. So this is my clown ice pod colony, so this is Armadillidium kluge. I'll try and get some good up close shots for you while I talk. So these are a brilliant species and they normally come from Montenegro, Dubrovnik and there is also another locality called Slano. These are absolutely amazing isopods and a real fan favourite. If you keep isopods at any degree, these are always one to get hold of. So if you have a look here, you can see they're really active, really brilliant isopods and the colours are just insane. So with these guys, the day to day care would be not much. You would check on them maybe every three to four days and you would normally miss them about once a month if that they like it a bit drier so if you give them a good nice amount of moisture then they will be a lot happier but only in certain areas so you want to stick to sort of going for the sides and you want to not get the moss too much the thing to look out for is really just saturating the side. So you want the moisture to go all the way down and then be absorbed. So I give these guys a nice spray just on the moist side. Um, obviously you can see I've got plenty of springtails in here. So that's always a sign of a nice thriving environment because the springtails will basically clean up for the isopods. So that is the clown. So these ones are the Porcelia Levis Dairy Cow. It's always good to label your calling these guys so you know what you're doing. Um, these dairy cows here are just doing amazingly. I'm so happy with them. And as you can see, some of the maintenance for these guys would be when you start seeing leaves that are basically see-through. Try and focus on that. Um, you would look to see how many of the leaves you've still got that are looking good. Maybe add some more leaves, so I'm just going to do that now. So I've got a nice box of leaves. You can get um, leaf litter from Nick Richards at Shropshire Exotics. He's a really good source for bioactive supply. And a good thing to do, a little bit of ASMR here, is to just crumble it up a bit. So it gets the isopods a bit more to munch on than that and it also means that it will some of it will degrade faster and give them the nutrients that they need from the leaves um, but you can see this colony is just doing so well little piece of rotten wood there that will be for their food so they will eat this and also sometimes the babies like to just hang out with it and this is a piece of cuttle bone Cuttle bone gives them calcium, so it's always good to have. Um, so I'm going to leave these guys alone now, and we'll move on to the Porcelio Levis Giant Orange. This is our Porcelio Levis Giant Orange. As you can see, being a new isopod keeper, I didn't really know how I was going to get this hole done, and unfortunately I cracked this one. But I cracked it on the other two, pun intended. So. Uh, always good you're always learning in this kind of hobby especially when you're making your own enclosures um, obviously these don't come pre-made it's all a bit of a learning curve which is always good I'm always wanting to learn I'm always looking at new skills new things to do so isopods in general are just a brilliant thing to sort of take up and they're a great source of income if you can do it right so you can see here, um, these are the Porcelio Levis Giant Orange, you can really see where they get their name, absolutely stunning. Um, I would do a couple of zoom shots, but they probably look a bit um, too jittery as I am on my phone, so I'm not going to do that for now. Um, the reason I didn't do the dairy curls, I didn't really spray them, is because they recently were sprayed, so I'm just going to spray these guys. With these guys I do get the moss a bit more and I do sort of about half of the enclosure. They do seem to, to like a bit of a moist period um, with the dry side obviously being left. 
So, that's those done. You know, isopods are not a difficult thing to get. People will wonder why some of them are so expensive. The main reason that isopods are expensive is availability and how prolific they are when they breed. And if they're from a region like Asia, they're normally more expensive. Um, so things like Cubaris, they are, well, I'm sure you've all seen rubber duckies and seen how much they go for. So it really is a hobby that you can enter at any level. Um, these are my milk bags. I'm really happy with this culture. I've got this off Jack Lewis. So just doing really well. There are quite a lot of Snow Whites in here. So I will put them in my other bin. But in general, I do like how these guys look. I think they're quite cool. They've got like a chocolate look to them, which are not typically found. Um, I'm not sure why my flashlight just came on. It's because my phone battery's gone back up. I'm just giving these guys a nice bit of moisture on the mossy side. And if we look, you can probably see, yeah, you can just see like loads and loads of springtails. Um, so they will be taking care of stuff for the most part. Little guy here just doing his own little thing. That's the best thing about isopods, they've all got their own personalities. Some of them will be really active and always exploring, always out. And other ones will be more prone to just stay under the golf park and they will focus more on hiding than anything else. So these are Oniscus acellus. These are the UK native isopods. They do like it a bit more damp than other isopods I find. So not much to do in these guys. They are quite self-sufficient. Not as many springtails in here at the moment, so hopefully I do get more. There are definitely some in here. So I'm just gonna give these a general, just a general look and light rain. And that should be enough for them. I know this video is going a bit quick, but uh, we'll see what it turns out like. So we're back to Porcello and Davis. Uh, this is the Snow White Colony I have. So let's see how these guys are doing. It'll be quite interesting to see that. So Porcello and Davis Snow White is a colourless, patternless morph. And they are quite beautiful really. They do their own little thing, very much like any other Lavis. Um, they will breed prolifically when they get established. This colony, like I said in my other video, uh, started off a bit rocky, so really, really glad they're kind of taking off now because I had a handful of specimens that got delayed in the post. And finally, we have the A. Perakai. These are a Armadillidium um, locality. Well, they're an armadillidium species and they are really cool. They should start breeding very well. They do like it a little bit more damp than other armadillidiums. So I'm just going to give them more of a general mist today, but sometimes I will do less. Um, and you can see all my enclosures are pretty much the same. Um, you know, vent holes just use some camping mesh with some hot glue, it does the trick. And yeah, isopods are just brilliant. I love them so much. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.